I look at neural nets as a function approximators. What I mean by this is that you can input any data and a neural network can generate a mathematical equation approximating that data set. It doesn't matter how complex the data is, a neural net can fit it, provided the right conditions for the parameters. By the way, the functions and graphs that I'm showing here are the results from a neural net that I trained. They aren't perfect and that's the point I want to convey. You can't throw neural nets at any data and expect miracles. A deep understanding of the algorithm is very important before you decide to use it. Today, I'll first explain the mathematics behind neural nets, which by the way is very simple. Then I'll visualize the training process so that you have an understanding as to what training a neural network means. Neural nets are often called black boxes and in the final section we'll visualize a trained neural net making predictions and decipher a little bit about what's going on inside the network when it's making a prediction. So far, I have thoroughly explored linear models in my videos. I have exclusively used these models for a reason as I consider neural nets to be an extension of linear models. However, before we delve into neural nets, I must make a small adjustment to the way I present equations and write them in the form of matrices. Trust me, this effort will pay off in just a few minutes. Starting with the input vector x, it consists of all the x coordinates of the points in the dataset. Note that I'm using superscripts to indicate the dimensions of the matrices. Next, I'll define the parameter matrix w, which contains only one entry and the matrix P is constructed similarly. I can then rewrite the equation using these matrices and output function fx is also represented as a matrix with n entries. The biggest drawback of a linear model is that it's inherently limited by its linearity and cannot effectively fit complex datasets. Neural networks address the issue of linearity in two steps. First, the output is passed through a nonlinear function with the sigmoid function being a very common choice. Then the resulting matrix Z is fed into another linear model with a different set of parameters. This allows for more parameters to be added, making the model capable of fitting complex datasets. Neural networks are highly flexible, and we can increase the number of parameters by simply adjusting the dimension of the matrices W1 and B1. In this case, I've made the matrix three-dimensional resulting in a neural network with 10 parameters. We can visualize these equations using a graph structure with several artificial neurons where the input matrix is represented by a single neuron due to having only one feature. And Z is represented by three neurons due to having three features. The operations are depicted using connections between the neurons. The same thing is done repeatedly to complete the structure. Training a neural net is very similar to the linear model. We can use automatic differentiation and gradient descent as usual to update the weights. I have discussed these topics in detail and will leave the link of the videos in the cards. What I'm interested in is visualizing how the neural net evolves during training. Considering this dataset and a simple neural network with one hidden layer, we start as usual with a random guess, but you can see that it starts fitting the data points over several iterations. However, it's still not good enough, and the reason for this is that our network can't handle the level of nonlinearity in the dataset. The amazing thing about neural network is that we can make this work with very few changes. Let's increase the number of neurons in the hidden layer to 5. The results are much better now, as we have a model with higher number of parameters to fit the same dataset. There's another way to increase network's capacity and that's by increasing the number of hidden layers. In this case, with two hidden layers and five neurons each, the network fits the data perfectly. A synthetic neuron is essentially a variable that stores a value. In the case of hidden layers in our network, this value is the output of a linear model that has been passed through a sigmoid function. As shown in the accompanying graph, the resulting value falls within the range of 0 to 1. To help visualize this, 
I will adjust the brightness inside the neuron such that for small values the neurons will appear light in color and for values closer to 1 it will appear bright as though it has been illuminated. A neuron in this state is called activated. So let's take a trained neural net with two layers and make predictions on this data set using a few discrete points. By selecting x is equal to minus 4.5 and inputting it into the network, one can observe the neurons lighting up sequentially in the first hidden layer, followed by the second hidden layer and ultimately leading to the output. The remarkable aspect is that the combination of activated neurons differ for each input number. For instance, see when I input minus 4, even though it's close to the previous value, a completely different set of neurons are activated. I'll run through several more examples and you can see how neurons are activated in each case. This is how neural networks make predictions. They have mapped each input to a set of neurons and the greater the number of neurons, the more combinations the network can generate. Consequently, Deep neural networks are well equipped to tackle highly complex tasks such as image recognition for self-driving cars. Neural networks are a simple yet powerful function approximators that has been at the center of things for the past 10 years or so. However, you need a basic understanding of how things work under the hood before you start using it. In the next videos, I'll discuss variations of neural networks and a few other things that will make them even more effective. As always, if you found this video informative, please hit the like button and leave some feedback in the comment section. If you want to see more of such videos, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you get notified every time I publish a new video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.